They all excited to be here this morning? Hallelujah. Um, how many of you are here like from North India? Like from the north of India? Well, born and brought up there, you know. But So I, I see a few. What about um, like, um, like Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Telangana? Many people from here? Oh, few for you there. And I see a lot of uh, Malayalis from Kerala, <laughs> uh, from yeah, a few from America, but brought, yeah, born and brought up here. Good, good. Uh, it is it is really good to be uh, in the presence of God. Um, and I, I I just heard the testimony that uh, a few of our uh, our parents are from uh, from India. I know they are uh, from the north. Um, I was born in uh, UP, so I, I I speak a little bit of Hindi. So. Um, I think we need to uh, practice more of, uh, you know, different languages and, you know, uh, because we come from different parts of India. So, and I'm glad that we have a group of, uh, you know, people from different parts of India coming here together. Um, I'm really excited to be here this morning. Um, last week, um, Pastor invited me to his, um, his house uh, for lunch. And man, what a treat it was and uh, auntie made some really nice indian food and uh, um, after a few few months uh, you know staying here it was such a pleasure to go and uh, eat some good food so thank you again for that and uh, so while we were there we talked a lot and uh, pastor asked me to share something from the word of god and um, always when i get uh, that opportunity uh, i don't take it lightly and i've been praying for the last uh, um, you know, a few, few days, I mean, the whole week, that God will enable me, God will give me the confidence and the, and the strength, that He will fill me with the Holy Spirit so that he, you can be blessed. That is my, my, my goal this morning. So please keep uh, praying while, uh, while I'm sharing the Word of God. Um, I think um, I have a PowerPoint. I think um, um, we will pull that up real quick. Um, my, the title of my um, message this morning is Believing God for the Impossible. And the subtitle says, Nothing's Impossible for God. Um, and um, in John chapter 1, uh, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So, um, as we are learning, uh, we are uh, meditating on the Word of God, I want uh, you to be aware of that fact that we are, we are sharing, um, uh, you know, God. Actually, you know, it says that the Word was God. So, um, let's sit in a prayerful and uh, learning attitude. Uh, remember, we are talking about the God of the universe, so let's really get in the study together. We have to, you know, we are in front of... Um, the symbol of uh, uh, the blood and the body of, of, of Christ. Um, you know, so the same way, I, I want you to understand, when we are learning the Word of God, we are basically um, talking about the blood and the, and the, and the flesh of, of, of God every, every day when we speak uh, from the Word of God. So, um, let, let's be aware of that fact while we are listening. Uh, to the Word of God. And also I will ask that you participate. I, I like a lot of, uh, you know, kind of uh, interactive kind of messages where, uh, because I'm an educator, you know, I work in school, so I like those kind of, you know, when we are teaching children, we want them to respond, right, to see <laughs> that they're engaged. So I would like some participation. And uh, like it says during the sermon, I will, as the Holy Spirit leads, I will ask for your participation. So be ready to participate wholeheartedly. This is worship. So let us focus. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, so first of all, what I want you to do is um, write down one thing you thought was impossible that God did for you. I mean, if you, if you have a pencil or a paper or, you know, at uh, the, uh, the end of the Bible, there's a note area. If you want to write it down or just even just think about it for right now. One thing that in your life that you thought that this was never going to happen. That this cannot happen with your ability or with your uh, skills. Or you never dreamed about, oh, you never thought about it. But it just happened. And it was impossible in your th thought or your imagination. But God did it for you. Just think about that, okay? Just, just uh, kind of, 
it could be like maybe 10 years back 20 years back something that god did that you thought was impossible okay just have that in your mind be prepared and while we are um, uh, you know sharing or while we are uh, meditating um i will uh, you know ask you to share that you be ready for that and then i will ask um for you to raise your hands i'm not going to force anybody to uh, to uh, share um but if you are ready um share for the blessing of the of the congregation so while that is happening while you're thinking about that i want to um share a, a video for us to see together and then we will get into uh the sermon um if you will pull up that video and then technical difficulties yeah no worries no worries this will give you a little more time to thinking be thinking and be ready with uh, what you want to share okay that's something that god did in your life that you thought was impossible Sorry about that. Sometimes, you know, technology is good, but if it works. So, please be patient. Sorry. It's, you know, from, I want it from 233. <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> i shared the link yesterday but um oh sorry this morning and i did not know how technology works here uh, so please uh After this, Joseph, who was from the town of Arimathea, asked Pilate if he could take Jesus' body. Joseph was a follower of Jesus, but in secret because he was afraid of the Jewish authorities. Pilate told him he could have the body, so Joseph went and took it away. Nicodemus, who at first had gone to see Jesus at night, went with Joseph, taking with him about 100 pounds of spices, a mixture of myrrh and aloes. 
The two men took Jesus' body and wrapped it in linen cloths with the spices, according to the Jewish custom of preparing a body for burial. There was a garden in the place where Jesus had been put to death, and in it there was a new tomb where no one had ever been buried. Since it was the day before the Sabbath, and because the tomb was close by, they placed Jesus' body there. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been taken away from the entrance. She went running to Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved. They have taken the Lord from the tomb. We don't know where they have put him. Then Peter and the other disciple went to the tomb. The two of them were running, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and saw the linen cloths, but he did not go in. Behind him came Simon Peter, and he went straight into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there, and the cloth which had been around Jesus' head. It was not lying with the linen cloths, but was rolled up by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in. He saw and believed. They still did not understand the scripture, which said that he must rise from death. <laughs> Then the disciples went back home. Mary stood crying outside the tomb. While she was still crying, she bent over and looked in the tomb. And saw two angels there, dressed in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been. One at the head, the other at the feet. Woman, why are you crying? They asked her. They have taken my Lord away. And I do not know where they have put him. Then she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Woman, why are you crying? Who was it that you were looking for? She thought he was the gardener, so she said to him, If you took him away, sir, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Mary. She turned toward him and said in Hebrew, Rabboni. This means, teacher, do not hold on to me, because I have not yet gone back up to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to him who is my father, and their father, my God. I think this is familiar to everybody, but I just want to kind of uh, bring this kind of memory back to everybody. Um, see, this is the scene, like you, you've seen, as soon as Jesus is resurrected, uh, Mary and Peter and John they go to the the tomb and but what I wanted you to focus is that they don't they don't really believe what Jesus had told them that's what I want you to focus they knew God Jesus had told them that he's going to die and he will uh, you know rise up on the third day but what is happening here is um, Mary Peter and John, I mean, John believed when he went into the tomb and when he uh, saw, he believed immediately, it says there. But Peter didn't believe that. And Jesus knows this very clearly. You know, he's resurrected. He knows. And he knows that Mary doesn't believe that. So that's why, you know, he's revealing himself to, uh, to her. And then what happens is after this, Jesus appears a few times so that uh, he can show that, you know, what he meant, uh, what he said was really, really true, right? And what I wanted you to 
uh, understand here is that see we are just like Peter and John and Mary we are just like I mean they or they are just like us human beings but the difference is that they have been with God they have been with Jesus they have seen three years they have seen the miracles that God has done right but even after all that what happens they really don't believe him because what they saw just before this is unimaginable or they thought you know Jesus is the Messiah he's God he's he's the son of God how can somebody or how can a God um, be put to death by the worldly powers right so he they thought like you know he's the Messiah he will uh, you know he, he will conquer everybody and he they he will become the king and you know that way Israelites can be free after that that's what they were thinking so that is the background I wanted to, uh, to uh, you know, to bring to your attention. Uh, if you will go to the next uh, slide. Um, the, here, Jesus, Jesus is crucified. They are lonely and afraid. Uh, next one. Um, yep, they are hopeless. But God reveals himself to them. And to build their trust, their faith... He shows his hands and side. Like Thomas says, until I see the hands and the, the side, he's not going to believe. Even though Jesus had told them that, you know, he will die and he will rise again. He, they, they did not believe in him. And then he breathes Holy Spirit on them. But still, what is happening? Do you think that Peter and all the other disciples believed Jesus? No. Right? They did not believe him. You know, even though he appeared in front of him. In front of them showed his hands and and you know his side and everything they still did not believe and then um, what is happening is they cannot believe this because what they're seeing or what they're experiencing in front of them is humanly impossible or they cannot understand all the things that is happening what God is really doing in the world right because humanly possible is not possible. So now for our attention, um, let's turn to John chapter 21, verse 15 onwards. Uh, scripture for today is John chapter 21, uh, verses 15. And I will read it um, uh, for, the, for the church. And when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, Son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. This he said to show by what kind of death he was to glorify God. And after saying this, he said to him, follow me. So even after Jesus appeared two times after his resurrection, revealed himself that he is risen and that he is God and he's a son of God. What happened here is Peter and all his friends, because of their unbelief, what they do is they go back. To their own profession you know they were all fishermen before this right so that is that is what they have done last uh, th uh, three three and a half years they have been uh, away from all that they were they were with Jesus they were doing all these uh, wonderful things and then suddenly Jesus is gone if you really notice Peter I wanted you to focus on Peter you know especially that is where our focus is this morning if you look at Peter he's like most of us or at least you know I am like Peter when when Jesus is with us, 
when we know literally that Jesus is with us, we are all very bold and very courageous and we, want, we are ready to do things, right? And you see Peter, whenever he was with Jesus, you see him the, the boldest and he's ready to fight, he's ready to kill, he's ready to do anything. He will jump in the water only when he can see, literally when he can see Jesus. The moment what happens, the moment God, Jesus is dead, Jesus is away from Peter, what is happening? He, he does not believe it anymore. He does not, he cannot really function. So what, what is happening is, man, I'm, he's like some of us or like me sometimes. And this is too, too difficult to understand. This is too much to handle. I'm going back and doing things on my, on, on my own. So what is happening just before this scripture portion, what is happening is they decide, Peter and um, Peter decides, okay, I'm going to go back shift, uh, fishing. What happens? They go try fishing and all, uh, you know, the, the thing about uh, those 12 disciples is, like Peter is kind of the leader. Whatever Peter is, is doing, he, are, the others are ready to go with him. So they all go, what happens? They fish all night. Do they catch anything? Nope. They catch zero fish. They cannot find one fish. But they are experts. They are like fishermen. They have been doing that for... But they cannot catch one fish. But what happens is, in the morning, when they are back after fishing, Jesus arrives and tells them, Hey, put the net on the right side of the boat. And what happens? Do you know what happens after that? They... Their, the net is full of fish. And I, I think it clearly says that what, 158 or 153, right? Fish they caught because they listened to Jesus. So what I, uh, you know, what I have learned from this passage, and you know, I have made this practical in my life too. Sometimes we think that we can achieve a lot of things in our life by... Um, by our own skills and talents, right? Because especially, um, you know, in America, that's what we have been taught. You know, we are, we are, we can do things on our own. We are, you know, if we put our mind to it, we can achieve things, right? But what I, what God has shown me in my life is, this is what happens to a lot of people. They think that they can achieve a lot of things in life by relying on their own talents and skills. But Jesus is showing Peter that, hey, I have a purpose for you in your life. I have a plan for you in your life. And if you are going to think that you're going to do things on your own, man, you're going to be a zero. You will not catch anything. It's not that there was no fish that day. Do you think that that, that whole night there was no fish in that area, that lake? There was. But there is divine planning happening here, right? God is really in work here. He is controlling all the fish. Do you think that the fish never found the net that was there? No. See, that's what I want. Or God, that is what God revealed to me. That everything that happens in our life is divinely planned. You know the things. You might be thinking that, okay, you, by accident you are here today. Or by, you know, okay, you came from India. Some of you came from India. Okay, let's go to church. And you, I'm, the thing that revealed to me was that every single thing that happens in God's uh, children's lives is planned by God. Nothing else is, is happening in our life. And I want you to have that conference. That is what I'm trying to share this morning. You know, sometimes, and this is again, my own testimony too. I, you know, sometimes we are, I'm like Peter. You know, we drift away from Jesus. We drift away like thinking that okay, everything is going smooth. You know, things are happening, fun. You know, um, we are, you know, making good money. Finances are good. There's no struggle. Children are doing well. They're going to school. And slowly, we, what we do? We become comfortable on, in our own uh, life, in our own strengths, in our own skills. What happens is, slowly we drift away and then things start because he Jesus never wants us to drift away from him because he loves us so much that Jesus wants to have a close relationship uh, with him every moment of our life he doesn't want you to just uh, kind of leave him and then do things on your own 
that's not what Jesus wants. He wants you to be completely, uh, you know, focused on him and do everything that what he wants you to do. That's what this, this um, story um, um, shows. You know, um, Peter, if you really look at Peter, Peter's faith is kind of, you know, shaken. Like you say, you know, Jesus is dead. Jesus is gone. Now he's going to go to heaven. He'll be by himself. So Peter is, is kind of worried about this thing. And he doesn't want to be part of this uh, ministry. Or doesn't, he doesn't want to do what God wanted him, him to do. So this is, again, the lesson that I learned. Sometimes when we, um, you know, lose our faith. We get into trouble, you know. Uh, Satan starts working in, in, you know, things, some certain areas. And then we are in trouble. And what happens is. We lose trust. We think that, okay, God is no more there. I mean, God doesn't care about me anymore. I mean, this has happened to me in my life recently. I've been, I've been thinking about, I've been struggling a little bit with this. So, I've been praying while I was preparing that God will speak to me as well. You know, and this is, this was happening to me. And what God was uh, showing me was when that happened, Jesus is not going to just sit there and just, Say that, okay, hey, he's gone and he doesn't care. Jesus came back, right? He went and made sure that Peter is ready and Peter is going to fulfill the plan that God has for him. You know, even though Peter was very, you know, courageous and he wanted to do a lot of things for God. Here, this portion is where exactly when Peter really takes the decision to really work for for God before this he was kind of um, kind of you know wishy-washy he will do things you know sometimes he's ready to go and then after some time then he will be just doesn't want to do anything but Jesus talks to him personally here he focuses on Peter he says man you say that you love me but do you really love me do you really just or are you just saying this and and God sometimes and I feel like God sometimes has asked me those questions. Do I really love him or our love for him is for cer certain other things? Especially this is a big challenge for us in America. People who came to America, this is the biggest challenge. Because what? We are all here because we want to, to succeed in life. Right? This is a very, very, very... And, and this happened to me when I came from India. It's very challenging. Are we loving God for, for worldly success? Or, or do you really love Him because He's our God? That is the biggest challenge that we all have. Especially young people. They all want to, you know, be successful. Become maybe one day the President of the United States. You know, become... But what God wants us from us is that true love for Him. Because you know what? He, I mean, God of the universe came to this world, this earth, and He gave His own life for us. Think about that kind of love. He was ready to give up everything for us. And so Jesus is asking, Do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than your, your, your skills and talents and these other friends that you have. See, he is our dear brother. Jesus is our brother, right? Because we both, we all have the same father. So what a great privilege that is. But sometimes we just forget about it and we think that, okay, we are on our own. We have the God of the universe with us. We have the Son of God with us all our life, all, every moment of our life. But we sometimes don't have that confidence. That is what God is uh, wanting to, um, you know, tell us this morning. Um, now, when we were um, talking about this, um, I was thinking about a lot of things that God did in my life. You know, um, one of the, the most difficult thing in my life, uh, or the unbelievable thing in my life was like at the age of 24, 
um, I was like, I was not sure about what I, I want to do. Um, but when I was a small um, boy, my dad asked me, hey, what do you want to become when, I, when you grow up? You know, I mean, all dads want to know, right, what their children want to become. And so my dad was like, hey, do you want to become an engineer? And I was like, no. You know, maybe I was you know, five or six. He told me this story later. And, um, and he said, uh, do you want to be a doctor? And I said, no. I said, I'm not going to be a doctor. Uh, he said, do you want to be a pilot? Yeah, I said, no, I'm not going to be a pilot. I don't want to be a pilot. Um, and he kept on asking, you know, with all the normal Indian uh, stuff, there, right? I mean, those big jobs, right? And then, finally, he asked, hey, then, okay, what do you want to become? And out of, I don't know where, he said, the, uh, I, I told him that I want to become a shepherd. I, did, I don't know what that really even meant. Even now, sometimes I don't want... He said, I told him that I want to become a shepherd. So, um, at the age of 24, God took me to Bangalore, Hosur, a place called Hosur. And uh, there was a seminary. And um, um, they were struggling with the outreach ministry. They were struggling with uh, reaching out to the, the villages. And because they thought, the villagers thought that, uh, you know, they are there to convert people. And, you know, so that you know there's that that friction, right? And one of the things that came to my mind was when I was um, in UP, I studied in Catholic schools. So what Catholics do very effectively is they go around uh, India, they start schools and they start clinics. And, you know, because they believe that if you serve the people, if you serve the community, you can show the love of God and that's how you share uh, God, the, the good news, right? I mean, instead of just going and preaching, that's what they do. And I, th I thought that was very effective. You know, a lot of people get good education. A lot of good Christian English education uh, happened because of these Catholic schools in India. So I really uh, owe them big time. And, you know, they have done a great job in India. So I told uh, the seminary president that, um, why don't you do this? Let's start a school, you know, in the village. So, after all this, what happened is, he asked me, okay, hey, can you help? So, at the age of 24, uh, God puts me in this place to start a school. And from scratch, uh, within four years, we have around 1,000 students in that school. At the age of 24, I become the principal of a school. And, I, you know, th what I'm saying is, with my own skills, with my own talents, I never was planning. I wanted to be a journalist, you know. I did my master's in English language and literature in India. And I thought, okay, I'll become a journalist or I'll become a teacher, something like that. Uh, but God had his plans. And then within a few years, I came here. I mean, now I'm in education. I never planned to be in education. But for me, that was huge, you know. Uh, I never wanted to uh, be in America, but I know that God has a plan in my life and he's doing everything f towards that plan. And that was sort of a, a big thing for me, you know, when I'm thinking, and I always think whenever I'm in trouble, when I'm, uh, I'm in, you know, I'm, I'm struggling with certain things, I always remind myself of those, of those things. Now, like I said, are you ready to share, anyone ready to share something like impossible that happened in their life? So for the benefit of the congregation anyone like really like unbelievable that happened that you can share so people can be encouraged anyone anyone i see a hand uh, from uh, just quickly if you uh, yeah just quickly take a um, minute yeah so when I was in 12th grade, I was in India, um, I had an accident, uh, a bike accident. Um, my friends took me to four different hospitals. I was pronounced dead at the fourth hospital that I was taken to. And when the nurse, had, when the ER doctor had told the nurse to wash the body, uh, she was taking off my clothing because it was soaked with blood. I grabbed her hand and out of nowhere, I, God gave me life again and gave me a second chance at life. So, that is the miracle that happened in my life. Wow. Wow. So, see, I mean, you know, it's not because somebody had prayed or somebody was planning or, you know, something before that, but, you know, God had, God has planned for him, planned for everybody here. So, you know, our every minute, every moment is is 
in his hand, in his control. Thanks for sharing. Anybody else? Anybody else that want to share something that was impossible um, and you thought that it was impossible but God did that in your life? Anyone? Okay. So, you know, we all go through struggles in life. We all go through sufferings in life. But in my personal life, these are a few things that I did so that I can stay close to God and stay close in my faith, in my belief uh, in God. Because, you know, I, when I was thinking about myself, there are several times that in, in my life that I, I lost faith in, in religion. I lost faith in, in God because of the things that was happening around me, the things that we, you know, we are seeing around me. So it's very important that we do certain things to keep ourselves focused in the word of God and to stay in faith. These are some of the things that I, I want to recommend and this is what I do in my life. Even, you know, everyone might have different things that you do. Um, what I do is I always start the day with God. And I recommend that do not compromise on this. Always start your day with God. You know, don't think that you are too busy not to have time for prayer in the morning. Before you put your, um, you know, leg down from your bed. Take some time to pray. Take, that is the best thing that I, I've, I've, I have, uh, you know, experienced in my life. Whenever I have failed that, I thought that, okay, it doesn't need, I don't need to pray like, you know, regularly like that. I didn't have good days. I had uh, difficult days. But whenever I sat down and I prayed and I meditated on the word of God, you know, that was, those were the beautiful, beautiful days where I had the peace from God. I had enjoyed my day. And the other thing that I said is, remember what, ha what God has done for you. Write all the things down. If you haven't done this, write all the things that God has done in your life. Write it down somewhere. And thank Him daily for, for those. Thank Him daily for the things that He has done in the past. We, we are very fast to forget things. You know, God does a lot of miracles in our life. But when uh, th time goes, we, we, we forget these things. Right? So write that down and then thank Him and, and remember those things. The other thing, the third thing I do is uh, memorize scriptures of miracles and promises. You know, it's a great thing that our, when our children do memorize. But when we grow old, we stop doing this. We, do, we don't memorize verses because, you know, we think, you know, we are reading the Bible every day. We don't memorize verses. But, you know, memorizing helps because when you're praying, use those scriptures to pray. You know, use those scriptures to, to, to remind yourself and when you communicate with God, re uh, recite those verses. Because that gives us that confidence, okay, this is what, ha you know, that we have learned in the Bible. So memorize scriptures. Also the stories. Every time I struggle in my life, I remember stories of Daniel. I remember stories of David, of Moses, all these, you know, uh, godly men in the past. You know, about apostles, about, you know, what Jesus has done. Remember those stories. So when you pray, you can, especially when you are struggling, when you are having some difficulties, you can remember that, that God is a God of Daniel. God is a God of David. God is a God of Moses. He has done these miracles in their life. So he will do that in my life too. And pray for those miracles with belief that it will happen in your life. You know, th know that God is in control of these things. And they pray that... And prayer is not... You know, sometimes we think that God does things because we are praying. It's not because of that. Prayer is just a communication that you are keeping your connection with God. You are telling Him that, okay, I am dependent on you. I need you. You are showing your dependence. God is not doing things because you are praying. Okay? That's not the way. Because He is our Father. He knows what is best for us. He is always doing what is best for us. It is the prayer is just you keeping connection with God. And then another thing I do is I sing and listen to songs that inspire. You know, like one of the songs I always listen is um, in Malayalam. Uh, if you haven't listened to this song, there's a song called Yehovah Yire. There's a, it's a song. It talks about the different names of God in, in, um, 
uh, in, in the original language. Like Jehovah Jireh means my provider, right? And um, so that song is beautiful. I always listen to that song because it tells me that, okay, I, I just need God for my, my needs. And then listen to sermons that strengthen. Lately, what I have been doing is when I get up in the morning after I pray and I, 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 I meditate on the word of God, I uh, use YouTube. Technology is great. I use YouTube and I play these sermons while I am getting ready. So I'm pumped up because I'm listening to, we have the God of the impossible. God can do anything through you. I mean, God has a plan in your life. I'm listening to these messages and I am confident because that gives me confidence. So I do that every day. And then the, the, the thing is to trust in God truly. You tr trust in Him that He is in control of your life and be at peace. Nothing else matters. God is in control and everything will happen for your best. And, so, and I also wanted to kind of read some of the scriptures that inspired me. Always Psalm 23. One, if, you don't, uh, if you don't do this, you know, Psalm 23. Memorize that Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I've used that a lot. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Casting all my anxieties on him because he cares for you. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is a stronghold of my life. Of, of whom shall I be afraid? I, you know, memorize these verses. Memorize these verses and repeat the recite. And then Matthew 10, 29, 31. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them that will fall to the ground outside of your father's curse. But anyway, there are so many verses that I have, you know, that I put together here. And then if you go to that slide, I have the, the you know, Jehovah Jireh says, my provider. Uh, yeah, Jehovah Shalom means God of peace. You know, uh, when you are not at peace, sometimes I use Jehovah, you are the God of peace. I need that peace to rule over me. Jehovah Rapha, if you're struggling with uh, any diseases or any problems with your body, say this, repeat it. Jehovah Rapha, you are the healer. You can heal me. Keep saying that and, and you know, you see wonders happening in your life. Jehovah Shammah, he will be with you all the time. And um, to end, what I want to uh, encourage is trust him in everything and he will make it happen. And again, as, uh, like I said, Jesus is our brother and he loves us dearly. Think about that. Jesus is our brother. You know, I have a younger brother. He's in D.C. I make sure I call him every day. Make sure that, you know, he's good. I mean, he has a um, uh, three-year-old. Um, he's not very, doing very well. I mean, she is struggling. She's having... And I encourage him every day, hey, God will do miracles. Don't worry. I mean, things God doesn't do anything without his knowledge. So be strong. And he has a plan in that, 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 that daughter. You know, she is, uh, has Down syndrome and, you know, all kinds of problems. But I told him, God is doing what is best for you. But it's so difficult sometimes to understand that. But I make sure that I, because he's my brother. And that's what I'm trying to say. Think about Jesus. If we care about our brother that much. What about Jesus? He's thinking about us every day. Do you, th you, do you really believe that? That he's thinking about you every moment. And everything. You're thinking that, hey, is he good? Is Bobby doing good today? I mean, can I, let me check. He's like that. He's our, that is true. Don't think that is just imagined because, you know, we are from, coming from India. That is one of the struggles that we have. We have that a um, lot of this uh, religious, other Hindu uh, mindset, Muslim mindset, other religious mindsets uh, that, is in, that is sometimes ruling us. And then we start comparing Jesus to other gods and other religions. Guys, it's not like that. Jesus is like, just like me and pastor. Me and my brother Elvin. Jesus is, is my brother. So I want that, and you to have that confidence. And you know, sometimes I don't have that confidence. That's why I'm repeating myself. I want you to have that confidence. He's there for you. Anyway, um, he wants the best for us. And our Heavenly Father is God of the universe. And everything is possible for him. There is nothing that is impossible for our God. Amen? And we are all in His plan to expand His love. That is what He is looking for. We are, you, God has chosen you to expand His love in the, in the world. Nothing else matters. He is, He has chosen you 
to to expand his love to to go and uh, you know it may not be preaching just like maybe pastor you know may not be like other pe preachers but god has chosen you to do certain things and he will reveal that to you in in, in the in the right times and in, he's doing that through uh, you know through you and let's pray that uh, we will be able to surrender our lives completely to glorify him may uh, the name of the lord be glorified through this